For a couple of years now I've been using some cheap faux sliders from Tiger and they've taken their beating but they have uh, protected my door, I can't deny that. Um, here's how it looks uh, in the bracket, those are supposed to be straight out and they almost immediately curled around like that. There's quite a bit of carnage on these, uh, you can see I I definitely use my truck uh, off-road and I do get into some rocks uh, and I do I do make contact. These were kind of a triangle shape so they probably lost a couple inches or, or more of uh, clearance that so made it worse. So for my first real uh, metal fabrication uh, project I decided to do some real rock sliders and a matter of fact uh, my friend Mike has an F-150 as well and he needed a set so we were able to do two. The real start of the project was acquiring the steel. I've considered rock sliders quite a bit. There's not that many companies that make them for F-150s for some reason, and then the prices on those are usually run around $1,100, $1,200, uh, plus shipping $100, $150 or more. So uh, kind of economically wise, I decided uh, we could make them ourselves. And um, I was even able to buy, a, you know, I bought an Evolution uh, a cold cu cut saw for that. It's just part of the, the you know, the price of, the, of doing the project, I guess you could say. Uh, but we'll be cutting a bunch of steel and... Um, setting it up. I've decided to do basically all uh, the two inch, two, two by two inch uh, uh, square pipe, um, three sixteenths. So it's going to be plenty strong. There's a few reasons for that. Um, but the, at the points that this is going to connect to the truck, uh, there's a quite a bit of a gap um, at the rear of that that's going to kind of overhang. So I wanted to uh, make sure that there was a, a good enough strength in that. And I also decided to do all um, uh, square tubing instead of a, kind of the standard is a lot of times it's a square tube on the inside and round on the out. And uh, kind of for simplicity sake, sakes, we decided to do it all um, square tube, and no, no pipe bending needed and stuff like that. No uh, notching and everything. After all the cuts were done, we uh, did some uh, flat disc uh, grinding on them to uh, clean the mill scale off and make them so that the welds are going to stick better. Uh, we also used a, kind of a wire brush on a uh, grinder as well to, to strip some of that off. When we started this project, really none of us had much uh, welding experience at all, and Jason was pretty hungry to really learn and do a lot of it, so he uh, stepped up and uh, did a bunch of our welding for us. We're fairly uh, self-taught welders. We're kind of YouTube certified welders is what I like to say. This metal fabrication project was a lot of fun and we had uh, several friends stop by and uh, chip in and uh, help out. And because we're all beginner welders, uh, we go by the motto, uh, a grinder and paint makes a welder I ain't. My F-150 is a crew cab short bed and Mike's is a, I don't know what you call it, an extended cab uh, with a six and a half foot bed. But that ends up the same frame length, so these all ended up exactly the same size. They're actually eight and a half feet long. They weigh 92 pounds each, which is pretty excessive, but they are beefy. They're not going to have a problem, I can tell you that. And uh, my final cost on just the metal alone uh, for each set, it was about uh, a little over $200. The construction of the main slider parts is really pretty simple. It's just uh, the two main bars with five connector pieces in between and then um, kind of metal caps welded on the ends. Uh, we did a 45 degree cut on the front so that um, you know it would slide off the rocks a little bit and I kind of wanted to do a little bit more than 45 but the, the saw really kind of is a limited, uh, limit, limiting factor there. The welder I had borrowed from my friend Kurt and we went through about a half a spool of uh, 10 pound uh, 0.3 wire and about two full argon CO2 tanks. We did this project uh, over a couple of main weekends in a two, three week uh, period and uh, didn't really keep track of how much time was spent on each set of sliders really because we were kind of doing them both and a lot of hanging around and deciding what to do next and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to guess maybe between 20 and 30 hours on a, on a set of sliders. I go a lot quicker now that I know what I'm doing and, and uh, have done it once, you know, as always. Rock sliders are easy enough and it's a great project to uh, learn a lot of new skills on and even my wife Lori was uh, really interested in uh, doing some welding and, and uh, took some time to practice and stepped up and uh, contributed and did some of the welds as well. In the end we only ended up buying kind of three different types of metal. Uh, the main one of course is this 2 inch by 2 inch 3 16 inch uh, square tube I guess you could call it and um, those are eight and a half feet long so there was quite a bit of that that adds up to most of the weight. 
The other uh, thing I had to buy was some, I, to make it easier, I did two inch wide, um, I guess you could call it plate, that uh, was only one eighth, and we used that for those end caps on the, you can see right there where the, the end of the 45 needs to be covered. And then the last piece of metal was that uh, quarter inch uh, plate that was eight and a half inches wide that we cut up into the, for the brackets that got bent and or ended up being the gussets. So those are the only three uh, types of metal that we uh, ended up getting. Basically constructed this using kind of some standard techniques, uh, clamped it all together, uh, tacked it uh, with some uh, small tack welds. Uh, and then uh, basically went about uh, welding them all. I tried to spread out where I was welding so I didn't get one spot too hot and trying to do the inside welds last because uh, they're hotter and can warp the metal more and all that. This 316th didn't really seem to warp at all so it really wasn't a factor. Uh, again, we are not welders. We are not experienced metal fabricators. This is a good learning project that it worked really great. If you're looking for a really great uh, starter learning project for metal fabrication, man, rock sliders are a really great option. Uh, it's really not that hard, and uh, a lot of the skills you can just uh, pick up on the way, uh, just with a lot of practice and stuff like that, and uh, some scrap metal for welding. Uh, there's different ways to do the cutting than what we did. Um, you know, sometimes you, it might help you to buy the tools, sometimes not. A simple, uh, you know, $15 uh, grinder can do a lot of the work that we did here. The real key is uh, do you have access to a welder if you can uh, you know, borrow one or they, you can even buy like a Yes welder for around 400 bucks. I plan to do a lot more uh, metal fabrication type projects so the equipment that's uh, going to be involved uh, with this project is going to definitely get used a lot more in the future so that's just part of the investment. The brackets to mount these to the actual trucks were kind of fashioned after the ones that were on those uh, faux sliders from Tiger that I had and uh, looking at other sites like uh, Rocky Roads uh, type of uh, brackets, the same way as uh, most of the, the side steps and stuff mount. Um, and so that basically was this plate that we used. I probably did a little thicker than most, but I wanted to make sure, you know, a little bit extra couldn't hurt. So, um, you know, the trick was to figure out how to cut this up. And that, that is kind of get into the, the segue of, you know, sometimes spending a little money on some tools can really make things a whole lot easier. To do this with an angle grinder times the, the so many, like 30 cuts I needed to do would have been hours upon hours and all that. And, and this evolution saw really just kind of cut through it really well. Uh, it's so wide I, I had to kind of flip it over and do it, but uh, it still cut it so well and it made a huge difference. This saw runs close to 350, but I'll get years and years of use out of it, so it's not just for this project. So for this project, I got a piece of uh, eight inch wide, um, quarter inch thick flat plate, I guess you call it, and then I cut it into six and a half inch strips. This is what's gonna mount to the actual um, locations on the pickup, and for the Ford F-150, there's already really heavy duty mounts for like running boards and stuff like that. They're rated for 6,000 pounds a piece, there's three mounts, I guess, so it should be just fine on that. Uh, a lot of them would do that. Um, so I had it bent, uh, a friend of mine, Kurt, was able to bend this quarter inch stuff. So then from there, I'm gonna um, mount the pipe that goes over to the main sliders that connects this the sliders to the truck that way. And then I'm gonna have an extra strength um, gusset down the back of it. So that's basically this, another piece, it's two and a half or two or three quarters inches um, wide of that same uh, quarter inch thick uh, stuff. And then I'm cutting that to go on there and then that'll be welded as, uh, on there as an extra uh, strengthening um, kind of a backbone to it. That uh, notch out of that uh, piece of uh, quarter inch steel is done with a uh, angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. Back on the subject of the tools used, um, one of the things that came up that uh, I have basically three or four holes in each of the brackets that go onto the truck. There's only three bolts sticking out of each uh, connector, but I did four just uh, just in case I wanted to add another one. But the right tools really made a difference. I did the first bracket or so just using a hand drill, and it was a struggle to get through this quarter inch stuff. Uh, and then um, uh, Mike brought over his uh, drill press, and man, that made all the difference in the world. It cut down what would have been several hours of work down to just minutes, so that really helps.
there's three of these brackets per uh, side, so there's 12 total we had to make. So there's quite a bit of uh, heavy welding with this uh, half inch or quarter inch steel. To make sure it was all going to line up right, we put the brackets on the truck itself and then used jacks to hold the actual uh, main sliders up to that point and um, fitted everything together and did our uh, tack welds on there and removed them and did the rest of the welding on the bench. Well, yeah, I really debated for a while of uh, how to how to coat these, and uh, you know we thought about powder coating. It's pretty darn expensive, and uh, kind of eliminated that fairly quickly because that's this is kind of a, a thrifty overland project. Uh, we also thought about doing um, like Raptor lining. That's not so expensive, but it certainly is a lot more effort and, and more mess. And no matter which way we did it, um, we knew it was going to get scratched on rocks no matter how good the coating was. So in the end, we just bought uh, some kind of two-in-one spray paint and uh, rattle canned it, uh, knowing we'll have to touch it up every year or so. Here's how it looks on the truck. And back an inch or so in the front, and pretty much the same amount in the back. From underneath here you can see the uh, two inch pipe that connects the, the main sliders to the brackets and you can see we also did um, kind of a little bit of a corner on these for just so it can't catch rock so much. On the very front one you also had a dog ear at the very top. This is my spacing between the door and the rock sliders and then this is about how it ends up um, height wise. It's just a little bit above the frame. You can see how much I have of a step here. I wanted it to be a step so I could get in and out using it. I kind of go up here, you, know, you can kind of see how it, how it sticks out from the body. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe. We'll see you on the trail.